Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. You're listening to Bulletproof Radio with Dave Asprey. Today's show is going to be interesting. At least it will be if you've never heard of a compound called kava. I've covered so many of Mother Nature's, I'm going to call them medicinal plants on the show, whether I've talked about my ayahuasca experience a long time ago or the amazing powers of coffee as a superfood, or even nicotine, uh, where you heard from Dr. Nicotine about what it can do. And you realize that certain plant compounds do stuff for people. And CBD oil and cannabis and things like that are one of the latest things. And you, of course, we'll see the medicinal mushrooms are just about to be legalized in a lot of the, a lot of the country. So what about kava? Kava has been out there for a long time and it's something that is mood boosting, something that I've played with over the years, but I had kind of written off because of concerns uh, that I had about safety that it turns out were warranted, but aren't warranted by real kava. Uh, and I also just could never feel an effect. And I finally found some stuff that worked for me where I could quantifiably see a difference uh, in my sleep quality from it. And I said, all right, this isn't a fad. I was kind of concerned it was one of those, oh, it's exotic and it, it doesn't do anything. And I realized it absolutely does do something. Uh, so I found a, a guest who decided uh, to, uh, and, and thank you for this, uh, Cameron, decided to sponsor the show to help get the message out about it, uh, which is something that I'm, I'm grateful for. And to offer a special to you guys listening so you can save some money. You listen to the show, you save some money if you want to try it because it, knowledge that's expensive to implement isn't as useful as knowledge that's more affordable to implement. And I think this is worth your time and attention. With no further ado, Cameron, uh, welcome to the show. Dave, I'm so glad to be here. It's an honor. Thanks so much for having me. You know, Cameron, you are one of those guys kind of like me who said, all right, I have a personal health issue that's really vexing, that's tweaking on me. You found something that really worked and you said, you know, I'm going to solve some problems in the industry. I'm going to make something that I couldn't buy and I'm going to talk about it relentlessly because I think it's worthy. And so because of your deep research and your personal experience with it, uh, you kind of hit the level to come onto the show where we can go deep on kava and the brain and all this. And let's let's get started first. Just tell me what is kava, and then I want to hear about how you found it. But for people who've never heard of this, like kava, kava, what? So what is kava? So kava essentially it's a it's a stress relieving drink. So what is kava? Traditional kava is a stress relieving drink that's that's made from the roots of a small shrub that grows in islands in the South Pacific called Piper methysticum, and the word actually means intoxicating pepper. Um, but it's been used in these this, these island chains, mainly uh, you know places like Fiji and an island chain called Vanuatu that's right next to Fiji is actually the home of where kava was first traced back to. Um, you can find it Hawaii and Tonga, and you can also find it in places like Samoa and Papua New Guinea. It's all over the South Pacific, but exclusively grows in the South Pacific. But it's been used there for over 3,000 years sort of as a, a social enhancing, anxiety relieving sort of like alcohol alternative course, when it was first started, they weren't even using alcohol, of course, but, um, you know, it's mainly used for, you know, enhancing mood, relaxation, mental clarity. Those are the most tangible effects. But whenever you actually start to dive into the scientific literature and you start to dive into some of the anthropological accounts and talk to the indigenous people, you realize that just like most of these medicinal plant medicines that are now getting their second day in the middle of this plant renaissance that we're kind of in the middle of there's multi-therapeutic action because you're talking about a living organism uh, that has all of these different mechanisms that work at all different levels of human biology. So traditionally, uh, when you go back in time, kava, was it like a ceremonial thing? Was it a, a nightcap? Was it uh, kind of a daily thing? Like, how did it fit into island life? Yeah, exactly. So kava is actually, it may be the most valuable substance in all of uh, you know, in, in, in the whole culture when it comes to like the cultures of Vanuatu and even Fiji, um, it's, it's, it's Vanuatu's number one export and they use it in almost every context imaginable. So they drink it like we drink coffee and they drink it like we drink alcohol, except they prefer it, of course, over alcohol. There are regular bars in the islands, um, but there's about 20 times more kava bars in the islands because they prefer it because they can maintain their sobriety and they don't feel as though it makes them, or, you know, puts them into an altered state or makes them a different person. And there's no addiction and all these things that are associated with it, but it's mainly used for weddings, funerals, spiritual ceremonies, social gatherings, virtually every single context where 
um, you know, individuals are coming together and trying to connect um, and trying to experience sort of more of an empathetic, uh, you know, connection between one another um, and sort of really explore themselves and explore others because there are properties to Kava that make it amazing for doing that while not compromising your fine motor skills or sort of leading to drunkenness and any of these things. So, it, you know, it's said in the islands that, you know, a man who drinks alcohol becomes a beast, but a man who drinks kava becomes more of who he really is. So it's it's really seen, it, it elicits sort of a kind of state of calm, enhanced focus. So it's like an enhanced state of sobriety. And that calm focus is kind of like an alpha state that's uh, happens to be the prime state for learning and concentration and getting into a state of introspective and creative thinking. So it's really a substance to these people in the islands. So it's not going to make you I mean, trip balls. You know, say using it spiritually, it, it, it's not like you know I, I smoked a lot of pot and you know I, I'm kind of lit. I've never experienced that even from higher dose kava. But is that a thing? Absolutely. Well, no. Okay. So, so the amazing thing about kava, out of all, I've like, I've experimented and had pretty extensive experiences with almost every major psychoactive plant substance from the really heavy psychedelics I've done sessions with ayahuasca, you know, uh, with, um, you know, psilocybin and LSD and all these kind of things. Um, and of course with cannabis medically, of course, and, uh, it's, especially whenever I was younger and stuff, kava fits in a category of its own. Um, I think there's a lot of wisdom in the fact, and the indigenous people know this because they have more powerful plant medicines like psilocybin mushrooms in Vanuatu and things, but they choose kava as their sort of main psychoactive that they embrace in their culture. Because I think there's wisdom in the understanding that the best medicine is not necessarily the one that hits you over the head or sort of turns your whole world upside down immediately, but the one that can be taken regularly and be slowly integrated and you can continue to get cumulative benefit over a long period of time. Um, so kava does have minor psychedelic properties, which we can get to a little bit later in more depth, but um, it has properties that allow you to experience a hint of that state, very similar to dosing actually, but without um, a lot of the, you know, you know, the legal issues and it doesn't, you maintain your sobriety. It's sort of enhanced uh, state of uh, sobriety introspectively. So. Okay. So you're not really going to be tripping, but you do feel relaxed. Correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I, that, that's what I experienced. I've never even entered a, a profound alpha state that I'm aware of from it. And I, I know what alpha feels like because of all the neurofeedback training that I do at 40 years of Zen and all. Uh, but I do notice really profound effects on my sleep. Uh, for instance, I'm in the late stages of uh, cranking out uh, my new book. And, and I go through this like two year kind of creative process where you're building a skeleton and then you build kind of the muscles and the connective tissue. And then you, you do the final step where it's like you put the skin on it and, and you make sure every word is where it needs to be. So last night, against all of my sleep hacking advice, I stayed up till four. Right, and I do this consciously, and I've got all the red lighting on, so I'm not really breaking my sleep. Uh, and I, uh, I, so I've actually been doing this for almost a week straight, where I'm just like doing 30, 40 pages of just careful word examination, rewriting, adding a reference, and just you know making it as perfect as I know how. Last night I forgot to take my true kava <laughs> when I went to bed at four, uh, and I take a handful of sleep stuff. And this morning I woke up and I looked at my aura ring. And I was like, oh, that's weird. My REM sleep wasn't nearly what I thought it would be. I still slept six hours. I just shifted my sleep later, which should have given me more REM sleep. And my deep sleep was just fine because I controlled my light, but my dream stuff wasn't where I wanted it to be. It was only like 40 minutes. Guys, I slept five hours last night. <laughs> and I'm like, it was only 40 minutes. That kind of kills on most people, but I should have had an hour and 20 minutes. And I think it's because I didn't take the true kava. Uh, that was the one variable there. And I've noticed that in other times. So even under extreme sleep things, it's part of the sleep hacking that works. Is that from alpha or is that from something else? Okay, so it's important to note too, uh, you know, because what you've been using is the oil, correct? You've been using the kava flex, right? Yeah, I love that stuff. 